The hospital actually was born out of adversity. Many uh, southern Chinese came here because of opportunities with the railroads and they provided cheap labor and they were welcomed by the railroad companies but not so much by the competition. And uh, a lot of support services came in, uh, herbalists, uh, people who uh, provided banking services, people who wrote letters for the railroad workers, uh, and it became a sizable community. But they also brought along a lot of uh, unfortunate diseases, uh, bubonic plague, um, cholera, uh, and tuberculosis. Uh, it was the Chinese community for many years was considered as uh, a pestilence and people didn't want our sick people admitted to any of the other hospitals in town. And so finally uh, we prevailed uh, upon the city fathers to build a hospital. Chinese hospital and the health system really came, started in, 19, in 1899. And it's because the Chinese, when they came to America, they came to San Francisco, worked very hard in the gold mines and building the railroads, and they were basically forced to stay within Chinatown. So being forced to stay within Chinatown, and they couldn't go to any of the mainstream hospitals, we had to provide our own system. So through that, we created the Chinese hospital health system. My, my family has been part of the community for many, many generations. So they came over to America in the 1850s here to California. So there's a long culture and expectation to give back to the community. And as physicians, we play an important role of, in our communities, not just the medical community, but the larger community. So when the need came out to my group to help this this hospital you know we we heard the calling to to come and make this medical center a better place the baseline was we were completely paper based uh, we were writing appointments on a standard uh, staples binder in pencil for each modality so you can imagine how difficult it was to keep track of when patients were being seen and um, the, the quality uh, accuracy of, of that. Um, our waiting times were tremendous. We, we had waiting times of up to three to four months for mammograms. A drop in x-ray would take three to four hours, and long enough that we would give out pagers like Cheesecake Factory and ask the patients to go have lunch and go shopping around here with that. Doctors don't like to be, don't like to look stupid, you know, and computers have a great way of making everybody, including doctors, look stupid. So anytime you're trying to take things from the paper-based system that you're used to to something that's, that's electronic-based and computer-based, you're always going to have an uphill battle. It certainly opened our eyes as to the issue about storage space. Uh, you know, in the old days, radiology would have stacks and stacks of films, and we can bring them over to the office, and we'd have a special cupboard just to store those films, and we see patients. And in our office as well, we have stacks and stacks of patient files. Being one of the first in our in our region to uh, make the leap into at a station meaning for use was, was a little bit tricky. So we really tried to and had to pull from all different sources. So we tapped into organized radiology. So ACR um, you know, has, has been putting out lots of bulletins about how it applies to radiologists. So that was tremendously helpful. Going to different um, seminars and sessions by experts in those fields, including Keith Dreyer at Mass General Hospital. With, with his uh, resources and his book was, uh, is a good place to start off with. I believe that the reason Dr. Ng has been able to be as successful in, in driving this is because it is a small practice and there are only a few people who are part of the group. So um, there's not, it's not like you have to try and influence 50 radiologists. He has you know, just a handful of them. So in that smaller practice, 
um, you can get the consistency. You can make sure that everyone understands the message and the reason why and, and what the benefit is in the long term. But I think what we, we show um, in terms of our outcomes here is, is that you know, being a small hospital is not, and a small radiology practice has not hindered us from being able to achieve those objectives. Uh, you, I, I would encourage people to definitely look into it. It can be done regardless of what size you are. Um, but just try to uh, be flexible, think a little bit out of the box, talk to your colleagues uh, in, in other groups or other organizations who may have gone through that. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel. There is now um, you know, a growing body of experience here. Um, regarding how to how to make that happen for radiology groups. So as time goes on, it will get easier and and the the importance of it actually only grows.